Hi everybody, welcome to today's edition of the Academy. I've taken a little bit of time to, for me to get this, this one right. Uh, today we're going to talk about the concentration of force, or mass, uh, as Klaus Witz used to call it. It's really kind of complicated. Um, at least it was complicated for me to try to explain. And it, I realized I had to break it into two parts. I'm going to talk about two different applications of this concept. Concepts the same in both. It's just how you're applying it. So let's kind of go over what it is what is this thing called mass or concentration of force? Clausewitz called it first uh, concentration of mass uh, because if you think about it, back in his time, in the 1700s or what have you, everything you know, artillery, infantry, cavalry, they were all relatively short-range weapon systems. Um, you're always able to see pretty well what you're shooting at. So, in order to affect a result, you put the mass of your army assets into a particular location. So, thinking in that terms, the definition kind of goes like this, okay? Essentially, in, in his words, you concentrate our power as much as possible against the section where the chief blows are to be delivered and incur disadvantages elsewhere so that your chances of success may increase at that decisive point. So obviously when you've got a large army you're facing, you pick the point where you're going to achieve the most dramatic result in that line. You put the bulk of your effort, the bulk of your mass, your forces there. Well, fast forward a couple hundred years and weapon systems have changed quite a bit. Now, units don't have to be close to each other and we can project our the, the combat capabilities miles out from where we are. So the modern thinking, you know, it's, it's the same principle. We're just considering you're, you're actually concentrating your force, not the force of men and equipment, but the force of the combat capability, the munitions, okay, the ordnance. You're going to apply as much of that force into a single point. The concept is exactly the same. It's just the way you go about it, um, you know, 300 years ago compared to now is slightly different. So, now, if you think about it, it's all about calculated risk. You're going to put all of your, not all your eggs in one basket, but you're going to put a lot of effort and resources, which is what we're dealing with here, your combat resources into a single objective to affect that objective most as decisively as possible, as quickly as possible, which means other parts of your line may be a little weaker, and that's a calculated risk. You need to be cognizant of what you're facing and what risk you're willing to take when you're going to go after that decisive action. So, Now, the second half of what he's, uh, this principle, you really can't do one without the other, is you have to use your force with the utmost energy and without wasting time. It's kind of paraphrasing what he said. But, so not only do you put all your force in one spot against one point, the objective, but you do it quickly and you don't waste time. You don't dilly down around. That way, you achieve the result, hopefully break the enemy and they'll, they'll scatter, but if not, then you're at least able to stop dealing with that objective and move on to the next one right away. Again, applying the same concentration of force, redirecting your assets, striking that second objective with everything you got, and move on to the next, just a, a ladder effect. Now, this is most effectively done when you've done the previous step properly, and that is the economy of force, which we talked about the last time episode. If you're maximizing the efficiency of your force, you know, the combat capability compared to its cost and number of units, then you'll be able to do this a lot better. Uh, so, let's kind of think through this. Um, one of the things I've noticed in reading the various uh, strategy authors uh, whether it's Sun Tzu or Clausewitz or Liddell Hard, it doesn't matter. Their concepts run the span between, you know, the, the engagement on the ground, you know, man to man almost, to, you know, nation versus nation, uh, which we come to modern days kind of think of to make it clear tactics versus strategy. In strategy, there's innumerable objectives that you could do, you could put your mass and force against to achieve whatever objective you're going to be. On the ground, right there in the tactical situation, there's really only two broad categories. One is destroy, the other is secure. Uh, 
So that's we're going to break this video up into two halves. The first, right now we're going to talk about the destroy part. The next video we'll talk about secure. Okay. So let's look at how we apply this force of concentration of force to target destruction. You know, target destruction comes in many varieties. There's kill points. There's in, in Empire or in a lot of different uh, games. There's Maelstrom objectives, uh, kill something, or first blood, or uh, slay the warlord. That's all about killing, destroying, destruction. So, the way to accomplish this most effectively, and this is what you have to really concentrate on, is you need to focus your fire in the right priority. I'll show you, I'll talk about that in a second, to get the maximum effect on the target. <clears throat> so, there's a few ways to do this. A few aspects to consider as you go about doing this. One is if you can go back and uh, take a look at one of my earlier videos. Uh, it's Making a Fair Fight Unfair. talks about how to do that. And actually, um, in a recent battle, uh, Saber Duel number one, uh, it's already out there. I actually use this first concept to uh, focus my, my assets. Put all my, most of my combat points on one half of the board against a smaller portion of my opponent's force. And so that's basically what you're trying to do, is let your opponents spread out across the entire board and concentrate your forces in one half of the board. Whether it's center, it should be one end or the other. It basically puts the other half of their army out of range, out of position for a bit. And that's always useful. Now I'll even do this in, in Ma uh, Maelstrom games. However, I'll vary it up a bit. Now remember, in Eternal War, um, you know, it's all about, if it's kill points, it's all about killing. If it's objective-based, you still need to kill, but the objectives don't matter until the end of the game. Okay. In Maelstrom, they do matter throughout, which we'll talk about in the next video, but... So I'll, I'll use the same concept here. Most of my force is on one half of the table, but I'll leave a couple uh, units on the flank of, of that half of the table that will be within flat-out range of securing a couple of the other objectives that are out there. So that in case I draw that card, I can make a sacrificial run out there, put some pressure while achieving a, a victory point, okay? So <clears throat> that's one key way of doing this. You kind of set the battle up by putting all your all your forces in one, concentrating your forces and your mass and your firepower in one small portion of their uh, the enemy's zone. Now, the key to do this, though, is you make sure, as we talked about in the last video, economy of force... Each unit has its own job to do. Some are anti-armor, anti, you know, killing anti-tank stuff. Some of them are anti-infantry, anti-heavy infantry. Some are objective stealers. Some are objective holders. Uh, I gave you a long list. Make sure you're not misapplying here. Make sure you're not using your anti-infantry guys to go up against your anti-heavy, or to go against heavy infantry, or against lighter tanks. Yes, they can maybe glance it to death as an example, but that's not the most efficient use of the with their, the unit. What you want to do is kind of do it the other way around. Go with your most, the, the units that are most likely to destroy the objective and then work your way down. So if I come into a battle, I've got, let's say I've got some las guns, I've got a couple uh, uh, strength eight, you know, we'll call them, let's do the our arm bane, strength eight, like a vanquishers. Eight uh, armor bane, good range. Uh, then I've got some Melta. I've got some Strength 7. I've got a bunch of Bolters. Okay. Or Heavy Bolters, sorry. Lasguns don't count in this one. <laughs> um, if I want to go after a target, let's just, let's call it, let's say it's a Basilisk in the back, or the Whirlwinds in the back. They're going to take out my veterans real easy. I don't want to send my auto cannons after that, or the Heavy Bolters. Yeah, the Heavy Bolters might be able to glance, uh, penetrate the side armor. And yeah, the sevens, the auto strength auto cannons will be enough to do some damage to it. But point for point, roll, dice roll for dice roll, they're not as likely to destroy the whirlwind. Go with your strength nine AP two because you're going to penetrate on a three, uh, four. No, it's on a three. Glance nine versus twelve for an armor. Let's just assume it's the worst case. Twelve armor. Blow it up on a six. You need three hits. Okay. Guard shooting isn't great, but let's let's say you've got a predator. Uh, that's three shots. One of them's twin linked. You're going to get some good shots there. You probably you're increasing your odds of taking it out with one of your units 
meaning the other units that could also take it out are free to shoot up at something else. And so you pick your set your target priority correctly. Target priority will be in a separate video in the future, but you decide what's most the biggest threat to you. Whatever the first thing is, you have fired the units most capable of destroying that first. Then if it's not destroyed, you start doing other things at it until it is gone. Move on to the next. <clears throat> That's how you concentrate your force. Okay. Now, one of the things you can do, um, actually Scardcast uh, does this really, really well. Uh, of course, he does play Eldar. Uh, and even with Dark Eldar, he plays the Eldar allies. And so he's able to manipulate reserves a little bit. This, this is a key here, is being able to manipulate reserves. So think of guard with the, uh, I call it logistics officer, it's the uh, officer of the fleet. Okay. If you can improve your odds of bringing in your reserves when you want them, or delaying them when you need to, you can put more of your mass in reserve so that you can deploy in a more favorable position. And it also prevents the opponent from hitting yours and taking yours out. You know, prevents the alpha strike from you know taking you. Um, watch a few of his videos uh, against Scarred Cash. You know, I'll probably put a link to his his channel in the below. But he has a lot of good examples when he's running his Dark Eldar of how he manipulates the reserves to bring them in at the for his tactics the right time, whatever that happens to be. There are times when he wants to delay them. There's times he wants to bring them in early, and he does that. So, uh, and there are a lot of times he'll put most of his force in reserve, and you will see me do that occasionally in my videos as well. Uh, I've talked about it in a uh, other in a previous uh, Academy video, and uh, I stick by it. It's uh, it does do me well, not all the time. You, there, you don't do it always. Always remember that. <clears throat> so now, to make this effective, this concentration of force concept effective. Every turn, you need to strive to make sure that you position every single unit of yours where it needs to be to either shoot or charge what its designated target is. Remember, the target or the, the thing that's supposed to destroy should match up well with what it's designed to take out. No sense sending in, you know, guard, take out terminators. Not a smart move. Yeah, they could do it. A squad of, you know, a blob of 50 could do it eventually, but that's not what they're designed to do. You send in stuff that's designed to cut through armor to design multiple attacks. You know, you know, you guys know the drill, okay? Now, we'll talk about the aspect of, you know, the objective secure and all that kind of stuff in the next video, but right now let's just assume units that we're talking about are the ones that are going to be shooting or charging. You have to move them every turn to get them in position to shoot the thing they're designed to kill. If, they're, if the thing they're designed to kill isn't on the field, then you need to put them as a, in a position where they can choose or shoot the next thing that's on your threat list that maybe some of your other stuff might struggle a little bit with. Maybe you have a gap. Maybe you not, don't have anything really that's designed to take out the Terminators, you know, the heavy infantry. But you've dealt with the Predators and the, the Land Raiders already. You popped them with your, your LAS cannons and your whatever else you've got that was strength. 9 plus and AP2 or better. Well, turn those weapons on the Terminators. They're not going to like eating LAS bolts from LAS cannons. They're not going to do well. 5 up saves fail quickly. And even 3 up saves, you know, Space Marines go down quickly to uh, orc close combat weapons. Terminators can go down quickly with the Storm Shield to uh, mech guns and LAS cannons and all those wonderful AP2 weapons that are out there. So, again, the idea is put every, every weapon in a position to shoot what it's designed to kill and support what everything below it. Now, any, let's say the thing you're designed to kill, you may not have enough guns to take it out. Um, we'll use the, the, the tanks again, um, the chimeras. Your, night, your last guns are ideal for that. Take them out with that. If they can't take them out, I've whiffed rolls enough to know that sometimes a Chimera is going to survive and just a fusillade of last cannon fire. So you bring the auto cannons in, finish them off. Bring in the heavy bolters from the side. Bring in the multi lasers from the front, even. It's just whatever it takes to whittle them down. But if that's the thing you got to take out, you focus your fire until it's gone. I see a lot of people, uh, a lot of players, 
just kind of go down the line shooting whatever's in front of them. Uh, or when they see a, a bunch of tanks or a bunch of vehicles, they fire at all of them, hoping to do something to one. Oh, yeah. Maybe they'll pop one. Well, the problem with that is twofold. If they're carrying something, let's say there's three of them. You, if you don't take out any of them with that first round of shooting, you've got three squads coming out at you. They're all going to disembark right outside your lines because they, they're all alive. If you instead focus all your fire against one of those, most likely, now of course the odds are going to go against you, you will see in some of my videos, you'll pop one. That means only two squads are getting all the way forward. The other one's going to have to walk. That's a big deal. Now, if they're just regular gun vehicles, land speeders, tanks, you name it, same thing. Don't hit them all. Focus fire on one, because as long as there's one hull point left, it's going to be able to shoot all of its guns at you. Now, yes, you could do a weapon destroy here or there, but you want to destroy the vehicle, knock all of its weapons out. Three hull points takes out a predator. One hull point might, one in 36 chance, or it depends on your, the strength of your weapon, might take out one of the LAS cannons. So you might reduce the volume of fire coming in by one if you happen to hit, but you're not going to take down all three guns. So going from, let's say it's three predators, you're not going to go from nine guns to six guns unless you take out one predator completely. So again, focus your fire, focus your force, concentration of force, on this, a single objective, a single vehicle, a single unit, until it's gone or incapacitated. A single Terminator is not a lot of a threat. There's obviously exceptions to that, but typically not a, a serious threat. You get a unit to start even fall back just even six inches. That delays them. So every little bit helps. Do you remember, you're trying to mitigate the opponent's ability to deal with you, deal with you successfully, okay? So that's what you're gonna do. Concentrate your force and fire on any one thing. <clears throat> but here's, I wanna give you an example of how you can use this concentration of force idea. Uh, it's a battle I recently played. It's, I didn't film it, this is before I came with the bat reps. I was fighting against an Ultramarine player who had an Imperial Knight ally. And I had an, my, one of my regular Polska armor divisions or groups. So I had three tank destroyers, uh, the, uh, three chimeras with veterans in them. Well, one was a command squad, but two other veterans. Uh, three conquerors. No, actually, they were I, kind of Le Lehman Rosses. Oh, no, they, they were conquerors, so I was using the conqueror tank at that time. And then one annihilator. That was my force with a single command squad that had a an officer of the floor, sorry, a ordinance, match the ordinance. Against this entire, it, it had dreadnoughts, it had land raider with las cannon, it had an imperial knight, it had uh, devastators with last cannons, plasma guns. It was just, it was, it could hurt me. So he strung his forces out across the way. I, did, I wanted to go second in this particular case. He strung his forces out. I left everything off the board except the one command squad with the Master of Ordnance. He tucked him behind a ruin that, so that no one could draw a line of sight on me. So I couldn't get tabled turn one. It forced him to move up. And he did, he just moved straight forward. When I came in on my turn, because uh, I, did, I did roll well in this case, I, I rolled very well to get all my units, uh, most of my units on, I brought all of my anti-tank weapons, so the Annihilator and three tank destroyers on the side in uh, where the Imperial Knight was. Brought three Conquerors flanking them. Because again, they can do, you know, front armor is 13, side armor is 12, and I could position them to get front and side, so I was in a good position to hurt them. And then the chimeras were off to the left. All that anti infantry, you know, the chimeras were two autocannon shots, five heavy bolter, sorry, three heavy bolter shots, and three multi, uh, heavy stubber shots, plus a heavy bolter in each one from the infantry squad. So all of the chimeras focused their fire on devastators and cleared them out in one round of shooting. All my anti-tank went for the night and took five of the six hull points off. The following turn, I popped it with one of my, one shot from my uh, one of my tank destroyers, and that allowed me to take a couple hull points off the, the land raider because I fired everything 
in the order that it could could damage the most successfully first, and it allowed me to distribute their fire at the next threat. The next worst threat was the Land Raider with its las cannons. Uh, so that's kind of how you could you can approach this. I would gonna, it, it takes practice, um, and it's very easy to mess up because you have to keep aware of what you're trying to accomplish and don't let yourself get sidetracked. It's very easy to get sidetracked when you under the pressure of battle. That's just the nature of conflict and, and the stress of a, a contest. In this case, the mental contest between you and your opponent. So that's concentration of force from a shooting perspective. Next time, we'll concentrate, no pun intended, we'll concentrate on the concept of concentration of force when it comes to dealing with objectives. Okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something from it. Share, like, and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Please ask questions if I'm not quite clear on a concept here, and I'll try to address those either in comments or in a follow-up video. All right? So see you guys again. Thanks for sticking with me, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.